Good morning, good afternoon or good evening wherever you might be. Welcome to part two of the Word Job Test application and this time we'll be looking at the red items, how to insert a header, whilst we're there we'll look at inserting a footer and we'll look at spell check etc. First of all let's tick what we did to finish up in part one, inserting and moving a picture and now we'll look at inserting a header in the document that we've been using, the Word job test document. We're using Word 2000 and to insert a header we need to click insert header. We'll choose the top one, the blank one, and there at the top of the document above the margin in the top gutter is the header and we'll just say this is a header. And we'll notice that if we scroll down that that appears at the top of every page. So that's how we insert a basic header. To insert a footer we go to the insert footer, just a blank footer, and the footer, we'll say this is a footer, And if we scroll down, we'll see that that appears at the bottom of every page in the margin area down at the bottom. So we'll undo those last two actions. That uh, shows you how to insert headers and footers. And we'll now move on to get back into the document itself. I can just double click in the document. That takes me back there. I still see that there is a header up there waiting to be put in, so we'll click the insert button and in the header we'll say remove header. So that's how we can do that. There's certainly no footer there. Now the next thing that we will look at in your job test situation is spell check. Fortunately spell check is available in uh, Word. It's one of the very handy things and the misspelt words uh, or words that do not fit as it were are uh, underlined in red. Now what we do, the easiest way to start the spell check is to press control home which takes me to the very start of the document. It's a good place to start. Now F7 is the key on the keyboard and it says the word recent seems to have seems to have been misspelt. So I look at that, it gives me suggestions here and I'll change that word. The word William. I can add William to my dictionary. Uh, Addison because I may uh, also have the um, word Addison in there as well and Wiggins we can add. Now William is being underlined in blue because Excel thinks, uh, my apologies, Word thinks that William should have as a name a um, capital letter to start and of course it does so we can change that. Now being a computer it doesn't know that the word Addison and Dwiggins are also names that should start with a capital. So if I uh, just double click on the A, uh, sorry on the word itself and I'll type a capital A D D I S O N. Let's fix that one. We don't want capitals because the caps lock is on. So what I'm going to do is to double click the word and back in the home tab, a little trick that I showed you in part one was to use the change case command where we want that word to be a sentence case with just a capital get it A Addison and the same thing applies with the word Dwiggins. So computers are clever but they're not as clever as humans. So now we're right, let's resume. Lasco, yes the case of Lasco, we'll change that. Rome's, yes we'll change that. Trajan's, yes we'll change that. Uh, the dazzling neons, we will ignore that because it, it is correct as we want it there. So Word has uh, guessed incorrectly there, we will ignore that. 
uh, Ginza, yes, capital G, change, and artifacts is misspelt. It should be spelt with an E, not an I, so change. Uh, books, yes, change that. And major has been misspelt, change. And there we go. So we had a uh, little bit of tweaking to do. We always need to trust ourselves and not spell check all of the time. So let's click OK and we can now proceed. So the next item that we'll look at is inserting page borders. So back in our uh, document, we might just want a border around the page uh, just, to in, in, just to show the um, uh, better presentation of the page. So we'll click insert and we want to look at a page border which is in the command design tab over here in the far right in the page background page borders and we get a selection let's choose the box border which is a popular one there are other options there of course and we'll click OK and there around each page is a border which certainly uh, adds to the appearance of the page nice and simple let's look at our next um, item changing the margins back in our document we see that there is a uh, certain margin here between the top of the page and where the text starts and to change the margins we need to go to the page layout tab look at the margins and here I can use custom margins or choose the uh, preset margins I'll use custom margins it's a good idea because that enables me to choose what sizes I want we'll just change the top margins at this stage by increasing the, the numbers there and we're shown here on the uh, preview tab and when I click OK there I see that that margin changed I'll undo that last action but remember page layout margins lets you choose your margin size we'll undo that action next we look at using the ruler now the ruler is quite easily learned it is this item across the top here if you don't see it in a document then you need to click on the view tab and put a tick in rulers now the rulers work like this they have three little icons here a down pointing uh, icon, an up pointing icon and a square icon they work like this the up pointing icon when I'm in a paragraph by clicking in the paragraph and drag that changes the indent of the first line if I drag back see how it changes the first line the hanging indent when dragged changes all of the lines except the first line and the box icon the left indent changes all of the lines in the paragraph so that's how they work the uh, left the um, bottom box uh, changes all of the lines at the one time and also drags back the other two with it next we'll be looking at the text spacing text spacing in the document again depends on selection the golden rule of all computing select then do so if I click in a paragraph I know that that paragraph is actually selected and in the home tab in the um, uh, in the paragraph group there's a line and paragraph spacing button if I click on the drop arrow by default this particular document is using a line spacing of one I can increase it Hover, hover your mouse over the numbers and you get a live preview I'll change it to 1.5 so there we go that's how I change the line spacing in paragraphs the next item and final item is how to insert footnotes a footnote appears at the bottom of each page or the page that it was created in now let's say I wanted to put a footnote about William Addison Dwiggins I'll click just after his surname 
and I will go to the references tab and insert a footnote and the footnote might be a famous person Oops, a famous person and when I scroll back up I see that there's a reference number one to that footnote number one to add another footnote I'll click in uh, I'll click after the word Europe and insert a footnote and this one will say uh, a continent and there is my second footnote so that's how we insert footnotes very very handy when you're doing your test in uh, Microsoft Word for your job application uh, bosses love to see footnotes and people that know how to use them I'll click back in this paragraph and we'll go back to the home tab and we'll put it back to a line spacing of one so there we are that completes the second um, uh, part of the job test application in Microsoft Word uh, it, is a, uh, it covers the basics in parts one and parts two uh, they will be uploaded shortly uh, a more advanced uh, job application test in Microsoft Word and uh, subscribers will be notified automatically of when that is uploaded it will be in the near future so if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please do so for automatic notification thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time bye for now